Hi, Greg. Jason Miller, how you doing, buddy? I'm in the process of creating a bird of prey. So I've done a few different paintings that have to do with birds. And the thing, there's two things you really need to worry about when you're talking about the birds of prey. First one is the eye. So you have to give that, the eye, a little bit of power. And then the second thing you have to worry about is the beak. And so of those two, each one will give that bird of prey the power it deserves. And so that's what we're going to be working on, is trying to create a powerful eagle-type beak. its hook at the end of it. it just hooks down comes up from there so you see as I'm doing this you're starting to see a little bit more of the shape or the design that you may find in this bird of prey And so it's very rough to begin with. And because it's just the outline, all I'm doing is just pulling the darker designs around. If you guys have any questions at all, feel free to type comments or observations right into the comment area. And as I read them, and as I'm drawing here, I'll try to answer any questions you might have about what I'm doing and how I'm going to create this bird this nasty bird of prey. And so this is a very quick drawing. I'm not going to spend a lot of time on it. I should be done in about 15, 20 minutes. And so I'm just starting now. You can start to see some of the shapes starting to come in. And how you start to see some of the the grumpiness of this bird of prey. And the first thing that ends up happening when people start talking about a bird of prey, you think of a real powerful bird, like an eagle or a hawk, with a very sharp beak. And so you're starting to see some of that. As I come start working some of this color in here and some of the different, oops, hey, I want this color, cut it out. And so we'll take that black out of there. Let's put a little bit of blue in here. 
this part here I'm all I'm gonna fill this whole area in blue here and let's throw a little bit of orange in on top of that just to confuse people a little bit a little bit of orange across the top here and again we're gonna go back to the smudging the smudging is just what happens on the beak to give it that that bluish tinge that I'm gonna feed all the way down here and let's put a little bit of this ah, I just wiped out all the orange gotta get some more orange going here a little bit of a softer orange which is good because the other orange was a little bit too bold anyways So one of the things that I used to talk about a little bit when I was teaching art was the fact that lines themselves are man-made abstractions. Now what is meant by that is, do you see how um, cartoons a lot of times are drawn with these really bold outer lines that go around the outside of everything? And it, things in actual life, like the edge of this bird's beak, wouldn't be in black it would just be the edge of the animal and so what you want to do is you want to take that down to as small as you can and have it more of a shadow and more of a color than a major part of the beak and so you see how I'm starting to take off some of the outer edges and so that rather than having the outer edges being something that is outlined, it just ends up as the edge of the blue. And then the black should be smudged into it. So you see how then now I'm going to try and create the outer edge without having a real dark line around it, which is what you want to try to achieve. Because as I said, the black outline is a man-made obstruction. So again, I'm just trying to fill in some of these areas with color rather than having the real dark outline. Come on, blue. I keep wiping out the blue because I'm holding my mouse down. I'm sitting on the white rather than on the blue. So you just sort of pull this stuff in here just to, sh to sort of fill in the beak a little bit, put some color into the beak area. This here we would like this to be orange, but not that bold of an orange. But I'll soften that up simply by smudging some other colors in it so you see how it starts to get some yellow showing up in there as I pull back and forth and that just softens it up. that's the the line that you want there on the bird okay so now let's just zoom out and see what that that starts to look like so you can see how that can start to be the, the beak and you can see some of the power that you're having there and then the eye is the next thing that you want to spend a little bit of time on just to to refine it and make it a little bit more so it has a little bit of more character in it so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to try and pull some of this white down into here as a reflection in the eye. And then I'm going to pull this stuff and close up some of the pupil in here. I'm working with a smaller uh, smudge tip now. And I'm not too sure I want the white here or if I want it up higher. So I think I want it up, up higher in around this area here. So this is a nice bold black but you can see how it's starting to creep a little bit more of a nicer feel to it and this gray 
shadow at the top isn't isn't super bright, but it still shows you the reflection of the light in there. And then you need to just thin some of this stuff out because it's the birds looks like it's wearing heavy mascara, and you don't want that. And again, this is just trying to get the eye to look a little bit less clunky. So I'm taking off some of the outer edges just to lighten it up a little bit. And then I'm going to take off some of the outside edges. And again, I'm just working on the shape of it. And so this becomes a little bit more like sculpting because you spend a little bit more time shaping the eye by taking away stuff and taking away color than you do by adding it. So. So just by pulling the white over top of it, then it takes away some of the, the other colors, that, like the black. I'm just trying to lighten up some of the black lines so they're not so thick. And while I'm doing that, it gives it a nice little texture feel to it as well, which gives it a little bit more like an eye, like an eagle's eye. So now the idea behind this is we want to want it to be very abstract and we want a lot of stuff to be happening with it. So now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to splash. See these primary colors that you see here on the right hand side? I'm going to start with the blue and I'm just going to put work with big blobs of color and then we're going to pull them all together in order to make it create the object that we want when we're done. So let me just see what this does. Okay, I don't like that. So edit, undo that brush stroke. Let's try that at about 350. So I'm just going to try a few different brushes here just to see if I can get the same idea. Interesting, but don't like it. So let's go see what else we got here. Um, that mess. What does this mess do? Hmm, that's kind of a nice, uh, nice soft. Or should I work with just dots? Or this thing, or this thing. What's this mess? It's kind of weird. It's just a shape. How about that one? <laughs> that one will work for putting the colors on. So um, let's start with the darker blue. And then we have some lighter blue. Then let's put some green in here. So all we're doing is we're just working on it with the colors that are your primary or secondary colors. Very bold, very bright. Now I'm in too close, so I need to do a little wider. This is going to be a very free-flowing uh, type of bird. So you can see how this is just getting... I'm just trying to get some of these colors in here. That I can then start to pull them all together. To give it a nice feel. Of feathers and speed and messiness. and So I'm going to try and get all of that stuff to all blend together and work. A little darker blue in there, a little darker green in there, a little bit of lighter green in there. Put in some of these little rich earth colors, like mud, some reds, some really bold reds, give me some real dark blood red. Okay, so then from there, then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go way up here into the smudging. We're going to go big. See how this big the 100 is? Oh, 20. I want 100. 50. 100. Okay, that's uh, starting to be it, but I want to go bigger than that. So let's go 400 nib size. Okay. Now, problem with that is that just wiped out most of my color. Yeah, that's something. That's more what I'm looking for. 
so I'll pull it this way. So all I want this to do is start to, to build a little bit of a, a blending of all the different colors. Because we want this to look like the bird is flying like a massive leaf. Huge bird just flying like a jet engine. So we're going to try and create that, that feeling of speed. But I also wiped out a lot of the colors, so I'm going to have to come back in here and add some more colors. But you can see the idea of how it's sort of, wow, ah, it's taken off and it's moving at thousands of miles an hour. So let's go up here. I need, some, obviously, some heavier colors. Yeah, ha, ha. Undo that brush stroke. So let's put that there. Let's put another one there. Put some light blue here. Some really interesting ones. Let's go down here to a real bright purple. Bright purple. Some darker blue up here. How about some red, pink there. And then let's smudge with the same size, the 400s. Now we're talking. get some really nice colors happening here which I really like so let's go here put a nice bright yellow in there I don't want it darker than that another little bit of yellow down here move up let's get some of these darker greens in here uh, right about there we need some dark green dark green there on that highlight area keep going up and how about some Red, no, got a lot of red in there. What else we got in here? What's this? Okay. And let's pull these through here. Da, 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 now all I'm trying to do here is just create a whole pile of different colors in here that I can then pull and play with to create my my bird and my pattern of my bird. So as I'm pulling all these colors together, you can see how it comes up with some very interesting texture and some very interesting colors. So now I've got the, the, the gist of the colors that I want on my page. And then we go to a smaller, maybe 200. Uh, it's still pretty big. Let's go down to the 100, 100 nib size. Okay, and then you're gonna start to create a little bit about a little bit about the bird and so some of these colors that come in through here are just going to fill in parts of the head just to give it a little bit more of a, a shape to the head and the colors need to just sort of flow through the head a little bit to give you A little bit of that beautiful head color and so what I'm trying to do now is I'm just trying to sort of connect this wild feather mess that I got back here onto the body itself or onto the head itself so it all sort of ties together and so as you pull these colors in and around and you start to see some of the colors and the shapes start to come out of there 
then you can start to see how you can start to create the bird simply by pulling the stuff and starting to move it around in order to uh, get a little bit of a feeling of feathers coming out of the birdie. Don't like that one. It's too long. Sort of got carried away with it there. So now, as I said, this is going to be a really fast drawing. And so you don't want to spend a lot of time on this body. All you want to do is give it that, that feeling of flight. And so somehow, out of all of these different colors that are exploding out of the middle of this, you want it just to look like this bird is just a bombing along. So there isn't any uh, right or wrong way here. All I'm going to keep doing is just pulling it back. And so that sort of swoosh feel that you get in the in a night symbol or any symbol that has an angle on it. So when you draw lines on an angle like this, it gives you a feeling of motion. If you want stability, then you want lines that are straight across. Um, but if you want motion, all you have to do is start is pull things on an angle, and then that gives you the motion. And so the whole goal behind this is to create the feeling of a bird that's just sort of exploding through the sky. And so that's what we're, we're looking for here, is that, aha, yee And so you can see how I'm, I'm just sort of layering all of these pulls just to give it that feeling of the different colors radiating out from this strange bird of prey. And that's why I said I don't know what kind of bird of prey it's going to be. We'll just see as we go along to see what we end up with. And you can see, if you're going to try and name this guy, you might have a little bit of an issue as to what species it might be. Because no one knows for sure. Now, these are hundreds that I'm pulling as far as smudges go. And so once I get the basic pattern out there for 100, then what I'm going to do is I'll come back in with some thinner ones and put in a, a, a little bit more of it just to sort of make it work all together. Yoo-hoo! We got a bird that's just a flying. Now we're going to go down to a 75, then we'll do a 50. And we'll do a smaller one than that. So this one still has a little bit of uh, width to it. So it will create, again, just a, a little bit of a different pattern. Not so heavy duty as the last one. And you'll see how you just keep pulling to keep that, that really cool uh, marble effect almost. Like the you're working with what they call the uh, alcohol paintings. And that's where all the the colors sort of just blend together because you let them pull across each other and pick up colors as they go and so that's what this is all about and some of the stuff we're doing here and you can see why I didn't spend hours and hours trying to get um, the head to be perfect because your eyes automatically need to get drawn to the the power of this bird in flight whipping through the sky and so I really like how it's given me that really cool effect simply by pulling and now we're going to 50s which is smaller even still and we're going to try and get And all each one of these does, as you go with the different layers and the different size of smudges, is it gives you, again, uh, another layer. And so each time I take a smaller one, it gives you just another little bit of a texture feeling to it. So you can create a little bit more 
cool kind of designs. Now you've got some of the little loose feathers, smaller little feathers flying around. And trying to break up some of the bigger clumps, which I don't have many left of the clumps of the colors that I was playing with. But you can see how it's starting to very quickly come together as a bird of uh, feathers. Now this is going to be a drawing that will look pretty phenomenal when I go to what we call the plastic effect inside Corel Draw. Each one of these layers will give you a, a really cool, um, I don't know how to explain it. You have just have to see it when I do it. So I won't, I'll quit talking about it and I'll show, you, show it to you when I get there. So you see how all of this stuff just sort of, you sort of pull it all so it all sorts of ties together. You see his down to a 30. So again, a little bit smaller. And each layer, as I said, each layer as you get smaller, it just puts another layer on top of it. And gives it another look to it that is a little different. Okay, and then I'm not going to spend a lot of time on that one. I'm going to put a 10 on there now. 10, which is your smaller one. Let's pull just some of these black ones down and see if we can get some black colors. You can't even see those. So then, so then now I'm basically finished this drawing. So then that was all there was to this drawing. It's really fast. It's really quick, and it sort of gives you the overall feeling of a bird whipping along. I would like to pull, and the one thing that just I don't like very much, so let me go to a 40 here, is right here around the eye. I think I want to pull some of this stuff down and just get it to swoop around the eye just so it, it sort of ties these two areas together a little bit. So it looks sloppy because it's not pulling very cleanly. So. Let me just uh, stiffen this up a little bit. I need to zoom in because it's still not. I'm not very happy with that. Give me back my smudge. Let's pull some of this stuff. Pull some color. Pull some color. 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 There. That's what I wanted. Okay, save as. We're going to call this bird, uh, I don't know, bird, uh, I'm going to call it bird eight. Because eight seems like a good number for tonight. Okay, and then we're just going to play with the, the effect a little bit. This is what the, the plastic will do to it right away. So you see how it just uh, gave it a real neat texture to it. But I'm gonna do uh, I'm gonna do some stuff in the background here. So what you do is you get a magic wand, and uh, what this does is it puts a mask on the background, and so you see the way it just filled in all these these spaces that you can see all through here. And I might have to stiffen up this line right across the bottom, just so that it, this doesn't get all affected, and none of the inside of all of this stuff gets affected. You want to sort of control where it's going, and so some of this uh, this highlight that I have in here, like this area in here. Um, I'm going to have to probably remove, but let's just see what I can do with some of the effects. So the first thing you want to do is let's go to uh, maybe some weather effects. Underpainting. Plaster wall, release sculpture. I don't even know what that does. Now, that turned out kind of cool. So let's stop and let's take this light out of here. <laughs> I kind of like the way that turned out. OK, 
kind of uh, it's kind of cool the way the the gray splattered all in amongst it. So I kind of like that. So let's try then to put some effect over top of that even a little bit more so. So etching. Nope. Cancel that. Let's go effect texture stone. Even better. So now you can see the way the background now has gotten very solid, like a thunk, and then you have this on top of it, and so it, it'll make it really bold. And so now uh, let's see what the plastic will do on top of that. And I'll probably play with the plastic a little bit to soften it. So now um, the depth of this, let's move it up. Move it up higher. A little bit higher still. And highlights. Highlights. And then smoothness. Nope, too much. I want to take that smoothness way down. Like that, yeah. Okay. So now you can see the way this, uh, this bird has sort of become this nice solid thing now. And the way it's all pulled together. This part right in here, I don't like though. So I want to get in here because it missed it. And so I'm going to have to play with this section right in here a little bit just to give it some more of the background texture. So I want to go in there. I want to go texture first, and I want to go with stone, I think it was, which is there. Yeah. And then I want to go effect and plastic over top of that and so now it matches the rest of it so you see how it, before it wasn't there and so it sort of uh sort of turns out the way i wanted it to look which is really cool with this beak being this color so let's go see if we can make this beak let's just change this beak a different color and we can do that by going fill but let's fill it with a effect uh canvas Nope, don't like that. I want to put some uh, some color in there, some effect of some color. Mm, color transformation, psychedelic in there. No, let's go down here. Red, no, there. Purple, no. Blue, no, too, too bold. Is there a yellow in here? Come on, give me a yellow. Give me a yellow. Somewhere in here there's got to be a nice yellow. How about this side? Ooh, I kind of like that darker purple. But you kind of lose the effect of the bird itself. Oh, that's not bad. Let me see what that looks like. That's pretty good like that. Okay, but now could I hit it again with a plastic? And see what it does with the plastic over top of it now. Plastic. But I need a texture in there beforehand. So then let's texturize it with uh, effect, texture. I'm going to go stone over top of that too. There we go. And now let's hit it with the text with the plastic now. Plastic. There, there, now we're talking. Yahoo! We got ourselves a bird, kids. And the last thing you always do before you finish is go in there and give it your signature. So that if and when you ever become famous, somebody will say, I know that. I know who did that. That's a Darren Kale original. So in this stone, I'm going to carve myself my initials. Oop, looks like a P. Edit, undo, zoom in there so I don't have to try and draw this. It's too hard to draw when it's so big. So you see that some of the stone effect that it gave in here and how these look like they're just painted right on top. And it gives all sorts of weird textures that you don't have to spend hours and hours creating. But you can also hear my computer working so hard trying to stay ahead of some of the textures and some of the things I'm trying to create. So 
There's my little DC on there. So let's zoom back out again, kids. And we are looking at one Funkadelic bird. This is pretty white in here, eh? I better do something with that. So let's go in here, get this, and we want to fill that with a different color of some sort. And I think I use psychedelic. Color transformation, I did psychedelic. Let's do solar ice. Black? No, I don't want it in black. Nope. 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 Get off the black. Nope, cancel that. So that's not the one I want to use. Effect. Color transformation again. Let's go psychedelic. There. I like that blue. And should we hit it with the stone effect? Texture it. Stone. Stone effect on top of it. Yep. And then plastic. That sucker. <laughs> there. I love it the way it all blends together. I think we have now have a finished bird. So I'm going to go save. That's bird eight. And I will post it on my Facebook channel, you guys. That's the session for this evening. Thanks for all coming by and watching. Appreciate it. I hope you had uh, fun watching. And next time, try and make some comments, you guys, so you can see what the heck I'm doing or how some of these are turning out. But I'll post this one, and thanks again for watching. Ciao. Have a good Saturday night.